I would like to capture that knight. Um, so, variation is g6, f4, bishop h8. And I've got a double attack. Um, g6, knight f4, I take it. G6, knight g3. Yeah, no, this just wins a piece. g6, and um, there's no avoiding me doing the capture. That's cool. I'll take it. Uh, apparently my ISP is still dropping my packets, but whatever. I have a choice. I could either play bishop e4, which harasses the queen. Uh, actually, he's got queen e2 there. That's not so bright. Or I could play g6 here. g6, and he plays f4. I move my bishop away, and that discovers an attack on his bishop. Um, so yeah, I'm just winning a piece there. But part of the reason I started this stream is not to showcase the two awesome trophies I've incidentally got. Ooh, Atomic Top 50, Anti-Chess Top 50. That's cool. That's pretty darn cool. Let's see. Oh, I can even export my games. I didn't know that feature existed. Um, but no, part of the reason I started this stream um, was just to be able to show off this awesome game I just played. And admittedly, it's going to be a few minutes before anybody shows up and even starts to watch what's going on here. Um, but... What I thought was most spectacular about this, so here we have a king pawn opening. What I thought was most spectacular is just how, even though I played this really well, how there was so, so much more that I missed here. So, yeah, this is the Italian game classical variation Greco Gambit traditional line. Um, it's the Italian. And this is the gambit that I used to play way back in high school. Um, and I did quite well with it. <clears throat> and so when I got to this position back in high school, um, I think I won almost every single game with the white pieces. It's really difficult for black to find the correct follow-up to bishop c5. Now many of you know about the Evans gambit. Um, yeah, I think the Evans Gambit is here. Many of you know about that. But very few people know about this, the Italian Greco Gambit thing. Um, so that's why I chose to play this in the first place, because um, there is such a low risk of me getting outplayed by my opponent here. So, yeah, Bishop B4 check is kind of forced. And white has to block the check one of several different ways. There's bishop d2. Um, there's knight b to d2. And finally, there's the move that I play, which is knight c3. So here we're looking at black um, opts to develop another piece. But in this case, he's mixed up his openings. And um, the fact that all of his pieces are in front of his pawns, and all of his pawns are on the 7th rank, starts to really pose problems for him um, very soon here. So I castle. By castling, I'm signaling that I'm ready to start moving my pawns in the center and try to open some lines. Um, I guess black decides to try to release some of the pressure by exchanging on c3. Um, but yeah, knight takes e4 is tactically refuted, as we'll see in a second. Stockfish is recommending black should play d6, and white gets to play e5 anyway. And note, if the center opens, then white gets to play rook e1 and pin the queen. So, this is why castling is so important in this opening, is because white's king gets to safety, 
and this rook on f1 moves to e1 very quickly. Um, and so there are just so many tactical threats in this opening, and most of black's pieces are still on black's back row. So um, even if white somehow managed to lose or sack a pawn in this opening, it would totally be worth it. As is, white isn't even down material, so it's just attacking for free. That's a really good arrangement. Uh, so this is what Stockfish recommends, queen b3 here. I'm sure there's some tactical justification, but basically white hasn't even chosen whether he's going to take on e5 or push d5 or maybe sack something on f7. Maybe play rook e1 and bishop a3. There, there's so many things up in the air. Um, so that to my last point, if castle kingside, this wins an exchange. It's a pretty common tactic in this opening. Bishop a3, either stopping castling or dealing some kind of devastating blow after their castling. Um, so, not seeing all that, Black sees that my pawn center is really strong. And he expects that I'm just going to, I don't know, um, somehow he expects to hold it. Well, he sees that d5 is no good, so he's got to play f5 to hold his knight. And this is kind of what I wanted to show off here, is that, okay, I found knight to d2. Knight d2, and I'm winning at least a pawn, because there's no way that black can continue holding the e4 square forever. But what I missed, this is really cool, bishop g5. And uh, the point is that Black's still not castling, and White develops another piece with tempo, and White's pretty much going to morphe Black. So Zug Addict would probably get a huge kick out of seeing this, this bishop g5. I mean, the fact notwithstanding that Black has totally messed up this opening, but uh, Black's best here is to try to keep the queen off Black's ba back row, Black still wants to play like d6 and bishop d7 and h6 and g5 and castle queenside. But um, white just continues developing. So knight d2, knight d8, and then we open the center and check and pin the knight. So we're winning uh, even more material. We take on e6. Uh, d takes and just play a whole bunch of sane developing moves exchange queens here, and e6 is loose, so black's forced to play rook e8 to protect e6. And at this point, Stockfish concludes that white's better um, by about, well, the white's up a bishop um, for a pawn, and the black king has no shelter, and none of black's pieces are developed. So this is enormous success for white. Um, the game proceeded, queen h4, I played g3. Here's the other thing I wanted to showcase. So f3 is the obvious move, I played it. It's more than winning. Um, but if you really, really, really want to win this quickly, the way to play it is to exchange knights. Because that way, white's pawn doesn't end up on e4 in front of his rook. And why is this so significant? Surely there's no checkmate right in the opening, right? Well, so there's this check. Okay, but sure, black can block that. Oh, but there's this check then. Um, and so black is forced to play queen to e6. Uh, every other move is even worse than queen e6, and queen e6 puts the queen in the way of the bishop. Um, so, like, it doesn't get any worse in terms of concessions than that kind of move. When you're playing a move that gives away your queen, uh, and still trying to keep going, uh, you know you're in for a bad time. <laughs> um, so... Oh, so to illustrate some other points here, things that Stockfish isn't spelling out for you. Um, so 
I assume if king f8, then bishop h6 check, queen g7, queen f3 mate. Yeah, so that's mate. So that's why king f 8s not playable. If king g8, um, I assume we just pin and win the queen. And note if queen takes bishop, or if, say if he takes the queen, this is checkmate. Wait, that's not mate. Um, this is check, and then this is check, and like we're winning this rook, and there might be even better. Um, so that's why king d8 is no good. Um, so if queen, yeah, so the only best moves here are queen e6 and queen e7. Oh, uh, why does it not like queen e7 though? This is something that leaves me puzzled. Like, if I had a choice between playing my queen to e6 and to e7, um, if those were the only two moves I was picking between, I'd probably pick e7 because um, I'd get a rook for the queen instead of getting whatever it is I'm getting. Um, and you know, maybe that's just one of those great mysteries. I guess either way, white plays queen e2. <laughs> oh, that's flashy. That's like totally uncalled for, Stockfish. Why would you play bishop h6 here? Um, I guess the point is that d5 must be no good, such that rook e8's best. Um, but, oh, Stockfish, you're just such a show-off. So... This is the sort of thing that, like, no sane human would ever go for, but, um, yeah, there's Stockfish. Stockfish goes for these things. Bishop h6. So instead of just taking the queen like a normal person, uh, we decide to torture black, I guess. Anyway, so all that was missed, and instead I played f3, and my opponent just started giving away material. At least I found knight e4 this time. Um... And having found it this time, Stockfish says, no, you should have taken with a pawn. Pawn takes is better. And I guess the point is that um, after knight takes e4, I guess castle queenside isn't marked as a blunder, but how is f takes any better? Oh, because we're threatening d5. Uh, pawn to d5. Okay. I could maybe accept that. Seems awfully weird. Can't black just... Oh, he can't move his queen away. Because then there's um, pawn takes pawn with the discovery on the king. So maybe there's knight e7 though. I guess the point... Um, is that there's still no knight e7 either. So, yeah, f takes e4 is better on account of forking the knight and the queen with by playing d5 next turn. So, Stockfish. Stockfish is just taunting me with all the things that I missed.